वेलकम टू माई व्यूज न्यूज इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज स्टोरी इथियोपियन फेडरल गवर्नमेंट जस्ट फाइव मिनट्स गो रिलीज अ स्टेटमेंट द स्टेटमेंट इज रिस्पॉन्स टू टेगराइज ऑफर ऑफ सेशन ऑफ हॉस्टिलिटीज फॉर द लास्ट थ्री टू फोर डेज वी हैव बीन सींग स्टेटमेंट्स फ्रॉम एफ्रीकन यूनियन यूरोपियन यूनियन यू एस यू एन All are calling for immediate stopping of war. Tigray last night offered cessation of hostilities, but Ethiopian government has other plans. Ethiopian federal government statement uh, indicates that government uh, is not ready to stop the war. Now, why? Details for you. Secondly. Uh, Somalia's Prime Minister Hamza Bibare is in Ethiopia. He was in Bahirdar where he attended Tana Forum session, a regional platform to discuss security issues. And uh, just uh, 30 minutes ago, he arrived in Jigjiga, Somali region of Ethiopia. This visit by Hamza Bibare of Jigjiga of Somali region could lead to a backlash at home in Somalia. Why? Firstly, viewers, uh, Tigray uh, last night uh, offered cessation of hostilities again, second time because the first offer was made, uh, first proposal was made on the 11th of September last month, then uh, last night. Tigray gave two proposals to international community that either international community should openly support Tigray in this war or it should put pressure upon the Ethiopian federal government and it should ensure cessation of hostilities uh, uh, between Tigray forces and Ethiopian federal forces. Uh, and before that, we have seen a flurry of statements from US officials. Uh, Uh, we saw statements from Antony Blinken, U.S. Secretary uh, of State. Uh, then uh, we saw statements from Linda Thomas Greenfield as well. Uh, Bob Menendez spoke, uh, and several other uh, uh, U.S. officials. They called for immediate stopping of war. EU spoke as well. Africa Union on the 15th of October released a statement calling for immediate ceasefire. So everyone was waiting for official statement from Ethiopian federal government. Ethiopian federal government uh, issued a statement five minutes ago. The government says firstly that the three rounds of fighting were started by Tigray People Liberation Front fighters. Third round of fighting started on the 24th of August, started by Tigray fighters. Secondly, it says that uh, before the third round of uh, start of third round of fighting, the 24th of August, some external players were involved in breaching Ethiopian airspace, and these external. parties provided uh, tigray uh, regional government with logistics ethiopian territorial integrity and sovereignty was endangered by tplf when it colluded with foreign actors that is why tplf should not be given more space and time i am speaking court and court viewers no space and time again for tplf if it is given more space and time it will do the same in future and since it is colluding with ethiopian external enemies that is why it is ethiopian government's responsibility to take control of all airports in tigray federal institutions in tigray and other facilities in tigray so it is constitutional duty of the government to uh, take control of all these main places in tigray the government further says that uh, it is ready to negotiate under the auspices of africa union for a comprehensive and negotiated settlement 
Now, uh, comprehensive and negotiated ceasefire is one thing and uh, immediate cessation of hostilities is another thing. It means government is not ready to stop the war now. Yes, it, can, it, it's, it says it can talk. Talks will go on for as long as it takes and then there could be some negotiated ceasefire. But no immediate stopping of war. Uh, it addresses uh, the questions raised by international community that civilian, uh, civilian lives could be uh, in danger in case of uh, ongoing military offensive in Tigray. Government says that ENDF has been directed, Ethiopian army, that it should ensure protection of civilians, protection of humanitarian aid workers. And uh, aid workers, civilians should distance themselves from TPLF's military assets. It is Ethiopian government's responsibility to protect the citizens of Tigray. So it's clear, I think, now that uh, what I've been saying for days that uh, Ethiopian federal government, Eritrean government, both want to remove TPLF from Makale. I've been saying that for more than a month, I think. Uh, now, uh, it's clear that government uh, has written all these things uh, in the form of a statement that TPLF should not be given more space and time. It cannot be clearer than that. So, the war is set to go on now. Tigray's call for stopping of war is obviously due to pressure upon Tigray militarily. Tigray uh, forces are under pressure. Tigray wants stopping of war. Ethiopian government has military leverage. Ethiopian forces, uh, EDF, both have military leverage. They think they can crush TPLF now. They want to press ahead with this war. And they are hoping to take control of these facilities, airports, uh, federal institutions. Uh, that is why they say that it is mandatory for the government to take control of these uh, places. Question is, where was the government when foreign actors were breaching Ethiopian airspace and providing weapons to Tigray or other logistics to Tigray government? Why didn't Ethiopian government take any action back then? Firstly, secondly, yes, third round of fighting was started by Tigray forces. Question is, what led to this decision? Tigray was, was Tigray forced to start the war because uh, no pr progress was uh, being seen uh, at the table. So that is why Tigray was forced to start the war and Tigray was being kept under siege. Aid was not being allowed to flow into Tigray freely. So yes, Tigray regional forces started third round of fighting. Question is why? Were Tigray forces forced to do it because uh, their people were dying? Uh, aid situation was improving a little, but Tigray was still under siege. So, only way to lift the siege was to open uh, war fronts. So, uh, government is now making it clear that it wants to continue the war. Now, question is, what will international community do? How will international community respond to Ethiopian government statement? Will it keep on engaging with the government diplomatically or will it uh, go for punitive measures, sanctions and maybe military support as well though not very likely. Uh, but now it would be interesting to see the response of EU, US, UN and perhaps Africa Union as well. How do they see this statement? In coming videos we will talk about international community response to this statement. Second, we are Zahams of the Bare, Somalia, the Prime Minister is on a controversial visit in the Somali region of Ethiopia. We know that he arrived in Ethiopia around three days ago when he attended Tana Forum meetings in Bahidar, regional platform for discussion of issues related to regional security. And from Bahidar, he is arriving in Jigjiga, Somali region. Uh, Hassan Sheikh, in his previous uh, term, visited Somali region, Jigjiga, I think, in 2016. And when he went back home, he faced a backlash. Because some Somalis uh, are of this view that uh, Jigjiga 
is part of Somalia, that uh, the, these areas should be part of Somalia. So by visiting these uh, areas, Somalia's uh, leaders uh, will legalize Ethiopian control of Jigjiga and Somali region. So some Somali factions uh, resist and they oppose uh, uh, visits by top Somalia's officials like PM and Prime Minister to Jigjiga, Somali region. But Hamza Abdibare is in Jigjiga. You can see his pictures on your screen. Uh, a Somali region's president can also be seen. He was warmly welcomed. The question is how will this uh, visit be received at home in Somalia when he returns home. Let's see. Uh, Somalia, Ethiopia relations are improving after Hassan Sheikh visited uh, Addis Ababa uh, a few days ago, a few weeks ago. Now Hamza Abdibare is in uh, Ethiopia. He was in Bahirdar, now in Jigjiga. And uh, Somalia needs Ethiopia for the ongoing war against Al-Shabaab. Thank you for watching.